This is July 2011, and one of the projects that our PLC teams have been working on <coughs> is using a Micrologix 1100 Allen Bradley PLC as a PID loop controller. <coughs> to demonstrate its operation, we have a small process set up here, which consists of a uh, muffin style DC fan motor, which we're using as a turbo generator. We shoot some air at it through a bent piece of copper tubing. It spins the fan blades and generates the DC voltage, which we then convert to the 4 to 20 milliamp signal to send to the PLC as a process variable. The PLC calculates uh, what the output should be, comparing the PV against set point, and it sends an output signal here, 4 to 20 milliamps as well, to go to an I to P to drive the air valve to admit more or less air to the nozzle to the turbine. So we have a speed control system for the turbine. We've used this process before in the past, controlling it with our Delta V DCS and also with single loop uh, controllers like the Siemens 353. But this is the first time we've run it with an Allen Bradley PLC in Micrologix. So looking at the enclosure here, we see the Allen Bradley unit. This is the 1100 unit. And attached to it, we have an analog input output module. This happens to be a model 1762 IF2 OF2. Two channels of analog input and two channels of analog output. That communicates to the PLC, uh, converting the 4 to 20 milliamp data for process variable into a signal that the PID construction instruction can understand. And then also from the output of the PID instruction back into 4 to 20 milliamps out to our valve positioner. One really nice feature of the 1100 model, the Micrologix, is that it has an Ethernet port. Yay! So we can talk this thing over to Ethernet. We're not limited to serial communication. And that means very fast communication and uh, lots of cool stuff we can do. Uh, once it's tapped into our Ethernet network here, we can access this PLC through any of our wired computers and even our wireless computers because we do have a wireless access point here strictly for our instrumentation network. So now I'm going to show you the interface we're using presently for the PLC. We do not, as of yet, have a HMI panel connected to the PLC. What we do have at this time is simply a uh, personal computer with the RS Logix programming software installed and RS links to manage the communications. And here's what we have. So looking at the program itself, it's very simple. We have a couple of scale instructions and then we have a PID instruction and clicking on the setup screen we can access the parameters of the PID instruction. We see gain, reset value, derivative value, loop update time, control mode, direct reverse, uh, PID control, auto or manual. Right now I've got a scaled set point of 20 and I'm going to increase that to 30 and we're going to listen to the turbine increase speed. In the background you can hear the turbine spinning a little faster. I'm going to bump the set point up to 50 percent and you can hear the dramatic increase in speed. You can also watch the process variable here. It's currently at 44 percent, 45 percent. We have a pretty uh, sloppily tuned controller right now. It could stand to have a little bit more gain and more aggressive integral, but we were overshooting at the lower speed, so I want to avoid that. So right now we've got a scaled set point at 50 percent and process variable at 48. The control output is about 70 percent right now. And you can hear the turbine as it comes up to speed. I can, for example, enter in a different reset value. It'll go 0.1 minutes instead of 0.2 minutes. That'll give it faster uh, reset action to wind up or down slower. And so now when I give it a change of set point from 50% down to 30, you can hear the turbine slow down. Process variables at 39, 35, 32, 30. It undershot a little bit down to 26. Now it's coming back to 30. Now this is not how you would normally run a PID loop controller using the programming software. This is simply the technician or the engineer's view of things going on. What's going to happen next week is we're going to mount a touchscreen HMI panel in our main control panel here. That will also connect via Ethernet to our uh, shop network and then we'll be able to give that HMI panel the IP address of our controller, our Micrologix unit, and then it will be able to talk over the network and we can have graphical objects on the screen of the HMI panel for changing set point and output and control mode and things like that. I'm still going to have my students use the RS Logix micro starter software to come in here and change PID settings. That's the kind of thing that typically a technician or engineer would change and not an operator. However, those parameters could be put on the HMI if we desired. So again, in summary, the uh, PID loop controller 
built out of an Allen Bradley Mycologics 1100 PLC. And just a few more comments on the Mycologics. I really, really like this PLC. Previously, we are using a different brand to do PID control. Unfortunately, the different brand and model, although it was less expensive than Allen Bradley, it did suffer some limitations. The analog inputs and outputs were not as rugged, and also I had to build my own PID algorithm line by line in ladder logic, which is something I'd rather not be modeling to students because you shouldn't have to do that on the job. The Mycologics PLC, on the other hand, has a built-in PID instruction right from the factory. The inputs and outputs of the IF2 OF2 module are quite rugged. The inputs are designed to handle over voltages up to 30 volts, which means on a 24 volt DC power supply like we have here, it is impossible to hurt the analog inputs through a misconnection of wires. And same thing with the analog outputs too, very rugged, and so we have a pretty much packaged, ready to go system with very little programming necessary to turn it into a PID loop controller. And because the IF2 OF2 module has two analog inputs and two analog outputs, I can actually do two PID loops in one PLC. Or I could do cascade control, or feed forward, or even uh, split range control on the output by using two outputs driving two different valves. So I have a very versatile arrangement here for a very reasonable price. And the Micrologix uh, software that we use for it, the uh, RS Logix Micro Starter Lite, is a free software package, and so is RS Lynx Classic. So we have no software costs associated with this PLC, which makes it very, very nice for an educational institution. So in summary, there is our loop controller, Alan Bradley, model 1100 Mycologix, controlling the speed of a turbine, or anything else we decide to hook up to it for that matter, and uh, it's been quite a success.